Hello and Assalamualaikum. My name is Ilya and today I'm here with Amira, Akmal and Hamiza. The topic for today is application of superconductor in MRI. Briefly, superconductor is an element or metallic alloy that dramatically lose all electrical resistance when the material is cooled below a certain threshold temperature. In principle, superconductors can allow the flow of electric current without any loss of energy. Basically, MRI is abbreviation for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. It is a medical imaging technique that produces detailed pictures of the organs and tissues in your body using a magnetic field and computer-generated radio wave. For your information, MRI is also one of the tools that is used to diagnose coronavirus or COVID-19. As you all know, the virus is related to respiratory disease. So, MRI is used to diagnose chest imaging. One of the largest commercial applications of superconductivity is MRI, where the largest and the most expensive part of MRI is the superconducting magnet. This consists of a coil that has been made superconductive by strong helium liquid cooling and immersed in liquid nitrogen. They create strong homogeneous magnetic fields but they are expensive and need frequent maintenance. So, the working part of the MRI will be explained by Amira. Thank you to the moderator. So now I'm pretty sure that all of you already know about what is a MRI. So let me explain in the simplest way about how does MRI work. So we know in our body there is 60% of water. So each of the billion water molecules inside our body is actually consists of hydrogen atoms and also the oxygen atom as a chemical formula of H2O. So for this MRI purpose, we will only concern with the hydrogen atom since the hydrogen atom is quite sensitive to the magnetic field. So all the atom inside the body is going in a various direction and also spinning will then creating a magnetic charge around them. So when a strong magnetic field is applied or introduced in the MRI machine, the atoms will align with that field, pointing to either the patient's feet or the head. About half the atoms go each other, but they are still unmatched proton. So when the RF current passes through the patients, the unmatched proton will absorb the energy and the RF pulse will disrupt the proton or the atom and forces it either a 90 degree or 180 degree realignment with the static magnetic field. So since the magnetic field push the hydrogen proton against its nature, once the RF pulse is turned off, the hydrogen proton will slowly return to their natural alignment within the magnetic field and release the electromagnetic energy absorbed from the RF pulse. The MRI is able to detect this energy and efficient in various kinds of tissue based on how quickly they release the energy when the pulse turns off. When they do this, they give out a signal that will be cut by the coil and then the coil will send it to the computer systems and hence the image will be produced. I guess that's all for how does the MRI work. So hopefully that every one of you will have actually a basic knowledge about how does MRI work. So I guess that all from me and I'm gonna pass the floor to the moderator. Thank you Amira. So from the explanation, MRI use very strong magnetic field, radio wave and computer system to make pictures of the inside of the body. MRI scans only concerns with the hydrogen atom which are abundant in our bodies. Thus, various tissues can be differentiated by MRI based on how quickly the hydrogen atom release the energy. Next, Akmal will explain about the superconducting magnet for MRI. Terima kasih, moderator. Sekarang saya akan berkongsi mengenai bagaimana sebuah super superconducting magnet itu akan mempengaruhi sebuah MRI machine. Okay, macam yang kita tahu sebelum-sebelum ni, MRI machine semua menggunakan permanent magnet ataupun bahasa Melayunya magnet kekal so bila ada improvement terhadap MRI machine yang baru iaitu dengan menggunakan superconductor magnet ia lebih banyak mempermudahkan kerja doktor kerana terdapat banyak advantage yang ada dalam superconductor magnet yang digunakan dalam MRI bila sebuah superconductor magnet tu digunakan dalam sebuah MRI machine 
image yang akan dihasilkan oleh MRI itu akan jadi lebih berkualiti berbanding daripada MRI machine yang menggunakan magnet kekal ataupun permanent magnet sebab superconductor magnet akan generate magnetic field yang lebih kuat dan lebih stabil berbanding permanent magnet semasa imaging proses, medan magnet yang perlukan adalah stabil dan kuat sekitar 1.5 tesla kerana uh, dengan medan magnet itu ia akan mempengaruhi tisu badan untuk react kepada certain specific radio frequency dalam badan manusia ada satu charge yang kita panggil sebagai proton yang bergerak secara bebas dalam badan semasa scanning berlaku radio frekuensi yang dihasilkan daripada MRI machine akan menyebabkan proton-proton dalam badan kita ni untuk bertindak balas dan realign dengan magnetic field yang dihasilkan daripada situlah scanner MRI dapat detect signal-signal yang dihasilkan daripada proton dan seterusnya daripada signal tu dia ubah menjadi image dengan menggunakan superconductor magnet, alignment of proton with the magnetic field dapat dilakukan dengan lebih cepat dan uh, seterusnya terhasillah image yang lebih terang dan lebih jelas berbanding dengan MRI yang menggunakan permanent magnet kerana the faster the proton to realign, the brighter the image produce. Next, penggunaan superconductor magnet juga menyebabkan electrical consumption of MRI menjadi lebih rendah berbanding dengan magnet lain sebab dalam kes ni, superconducting magnet yang digunakan ialah dalam bentuk superconducting wire yang dililit-lilit menjadi solenoid. Superconducting wire can carry very large amount of electrical current without the overheating because it has zero resistance. Dengan jumlah current yang besar tadi, campur dengan higher number of loops of the solenoid, kita dapat menghasilkan tenaga medan magnet yang jauh lebih kuat berbanding dengan permanent magnet. Dari situlah image yang lebih terang dan berkualiti dapat dihasilkan. Thank you, Akma. So, with the superconductivity, one of today's most important medical imaging modalities will not be possible. MRI, which depends on being able to align the weak magnetic moment of the protons in a patient's body with a magnetic field, requires the use of magnetic field strength more than one Tesla. This can only be achieved practically using superconducting electromagnets for the requirement of superconductor magnet will be explained by Hamiza. To get good performance in MRI, we should consider a few requirements yang akan mempengaruhi fungsi MRI. Yang pertama, image quality. Image quality penting untuk ensure we can get good quality image untuk kita diagnose patient disease. Dalam nak menjaga atau improve image quality, kita memerlukan high resolution image. High resolution image ini dia akan memberi small pixel uh, dan uh, image yang dihasilkan itu akan menjadi lebih details. So with the details image, we can get more information especially untuk kita diagnose in small structure. Dengan high resolution image ini, kita juga dapat memperolehi image volume yang lebih tinggi di mana image volume yang lebih tinggi ini bagus untuk get uh, good performance in MRI. In the meantime, the image resolution dan juga scanning speed adalah proportional dengan field strength due to the increase in signal to noise ratio. So, kita akan memperolehi shorter scan time di mana dapat mengurangkan patient discomfort serta dapat uh, meningkatkan patient throughput. Dalam masa yang sama juga, kita perlu memastikan field uniformity over imaging volume adalah tinggi. Dan uniformity ni belas, biasanya berlaku disebabkan patient's image dan gradient call yang digunakan to uh, recross that image. Dan biasanya, Uh, uniformity requirement dalam 5 ke 15 ppm bergantung pada body region yang kita nak scan. Faktor yang kedua adalah field drift persistent. As we know, MRI operate in persistent mode. Jadi kita memerlukan field stabilization less than 0.1 liter per hour. Faktor yang ketiga adalah loss of helium. Boil off of liquid helium mestilah kurang daripada 0.1 liter per hour. If lebih bermakna ada leaking ataupun uh, problem dekat superconducting coil or dekat cooling system dia. But kalau dia tak ada perubahan langsung, tak ada pengurangan langsung maksudnya dia tak consume pun liquid helium tersebut. Maksudnya ada something wrong dekat situ. Faktor yang keempat adalah external field shielding. MRI menggunakan ghost line sebagai safety line as boundary outside uh, magnet yang berfungsi as reminder bahawa kita sedang berada dalam kawasan bermedan magnet. Jadinya, terdapat banyak line dan uh, five ghost line ni merupakan outermost line yang juga merupakan hard limit untuk ferromagnetic materials. 
Faktor yang kelima adalah diameter. Diameter asas untuk patient perlulah besar supaya kita dapat diagnose in huge range of patient size. Dan yang terakhir sekali adalah length. Length yang pendek bagus untuk sesuatu MRI. Some patient menghidapi claustrophobia iaitu uh, fobia akan tempat yang tertutup. Jadi mereka mengalami masalah untuk deal with that situation dalam tempat yang kecil tu. So MRI yang pendek ni lebih bagus untuk menjamin keselesaan mereka. So there are few requirement yang penting dalam superconducting MRI untuk kita memastikan MRI tersebut dapat berfungsi dengan baik. Thank you Hamiza. As you can see, there are few factors that will affect the MRI to ensure MRI functioning well and we need to emphasize these factors to get better results in diagnosis using MRI. Lastly, we will discuss about the advantage and disadvantage of MRI. For the advantage, MRI is non-invasive and does not use radiation. So, they can be safely used in people who might be particularly vulnerable to the effects of radiation, such as pregnant women and babies. Secondly, MRI gives extremely clear, detailed image of soft tissue structures that other imaging techniques cannot achieve. The third one, MRI can easily create hundreds of images from almost any direction and in any orientation. For this advantage, firstly, MRI is expensive. Even the used low-field MRI machines can be as cheap as $150,000 US dollar or as expensive as $1.2 million. Secondly, MRI is not painful but it is done in an enclosed space and the loud noises that are made by the madness may be a problem for claustrophobic patients where claustrophobic is people with extreme fear of confined places. Lastly, an undetected metal implant in a patient's body may be affected by the strong magnet of the MRI. I guess that's all from us. Thank you.